Welcome back to part two of our full playthrough of Million Dollar Script from Portal Games. If you've seen our last episode, you know that we've had highs, we've had lows, we've had mediums, we have a beagle named MacGuffin, we have everything that you need for a fantastic plot. So let's dive right back in and see where we go. So in between rounds, I heard Chris lean over to Jeremy and say, Hey, I've got this great idea. Our villain who hears voices should work in the library. Which is just, it's, it, that's just great, right? A villain who is mean to everybody in the library, not because he means to be, but because he hears voices. It, it was just a clever joke. So I told David and Mac about the idea, and we decided to have a little bit of fun. I just want you to know, Paul, we came up with a great idea. The, our villain hears voices in the library. Oh, are you yeah. serious? <laughs> The voices in the library moment came to me because my mom is a librarian. I mean, you know, I practically grew up in a library. That was my idea! He said it was his idea? My idea! <laughs> <laughs> no, I told them, I told them, I told them as you were walking away, I was like, you guys have some pretty stiff competition. I heard Chris's idea and they're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, somebody hears voices in the library is the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> All right. But I was like, it would be just like Hollywood. We'd be like, wait, we're pitching first? Okay, we have this great original idea. <laughs> right before y'all pitch. Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. So to set the scene, we have uh, John Ronald and mm -hmm. Jeremy Bruner. And Jeremy Bruner. Right, our hero John Ronald, the family man trying to raise ten kids who uh, his wife tragically passed away, and John and uh, Jeremy Bruner is a conjurer who thought that John Ronald's wife loved him, but he was just hearing voices. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. That's where we are. Okay? Yes. All right, well, this time, y'all are pitching first. Okay. We'll tie the cat Y'all are here. pitching second. A pitch! Right. So if Jeremy Bruner brings back John Ronald's wife in the wrong way, she'll be a, a lich. And Ooh. John Ronald knows this. He knows, but he thinks mistakenly that he can bring his wife back in the right way. Well, turns out J uh, Jeremy Brunner has an assistant, an assistant whose name is um, Leroy. Leroy <laughs> Helms. <laughs> Helms. Leroy Helms. <laughs> and Leroy Helms finds out that Jeremy Brunner is in love with John Ronald's wife and realizes that John Ronald's wife was. Get this, bum, bum, bum. his long lost sister, bum, who bum. saved his life when he was a child from a frozen river. And uh, she saved his life, so he would do anything to extend her life. And he found out the true secret to bringing her back from the dead and decides to turn his back on his master, Jeremy Bruner, and join John Ronald mm -hmm. and become his sidekick and join him in his quest to bring her back from the dead. Oh. All right. Yep. And the lair. Don't forget the lair. The lair, right. The lair of the evil villain, which we... I definitely never flipped yes. that. The lair of the evil villain is a, is a dark cave, riddled with spiders and witches. Like, think, you know, double, double, yep. toil and trouble. Yep. And the name of his cave is, called, is the library. The library. <laughs> That's an original idea. I like it. I like it. Yep. I like it a whole bunch. Yep. Yep. Ooh, yes. I would hate the team that has to pitch after you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, y'all have a chance, all right? Uh, it's now y'all's turn to pitch, but I do want to ask one question. Do you think that there's any room for dazzling costumes in y'all's scenery? Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. I mean, the I mean, witches, for sure. The witches, yeah, costumes. when you think about I that, mean, yeah. Anytime you have a sidekick. Sparkling yeah. witches is the kind that I'm most yeah. used to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and also, this, good witch, you know, the sidekick is, is magical, so mm -hmm. his, his costume is, is magically glowing at all times. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. so, um, and, and being a dark elf, uh, John Ronald is pretty flashy himself. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so. flashy dark elf. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 I mean, true love, witches, fabulous costumes. I thought we had it all nailed. We had it all nailed. There was no way he was going to go with another pitch. I mean, oh boy, just between you two, they don't stand a chance. All right. Anyway, it's y'all's turn to pitch. I will actually uh, flip it this time. Are you going to be our main narrator? Yes. And a pitch. Uh, 
right, so we start in the library with Jeremy Bruner. There's all these whispers. Every time, you have to whisper in the library. Every time somebody whispers, he responds, it's because she loves me. No, I'm going to bring her back from the dead. And he's just sitting here talking about that. And uh, we cut over. Well, first we pan through the library. We see all the patrons in their amazing costumes. I'm talking about costumes that light up. They go on fire and then change into something else. I mean, these costumes are mind-blowing. Yeah. Think, think Liberace meets Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I love that look. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It, I mean, just these costumes are amazing. And we cut to the most fantastic costume of all, the head librarian, Danielle Steele. An Ooh. orc living in a Dark Elf village despite the war the orcs had because she believed in the Dark Elves' family values. She believed in their ideals, so she turned turncoat and fought for the Dark Elves and now works as their head librarian. She, hearing this, goes... To uh, the ma- the main hero's name, who is John Ronald. John Ronald's John Ronald. house yep. knocks on his door and says, "I I know we don't really know each other. You've brought your kids in a few times, but um, I, I've heard Jeremy Bruner's planning on bringing your wife back from the dead, and I don't know if that'd be good or not." And he just looks sullen, just like he he's been punched in the gut. And she's like, "What?" He's like, "Are you worried she's going to come back as a witch?" And he's like, "No, don't be stupid. That's way overdone. I uh, my <laughs> wife was literally a witch." And we cut back to his wife. Uh, his wife, like uh, back in the day, going <laughs> as she cast a love spell on him, forcing him to marry her and have all these kids. He loves his kids, he loves his family, but she forced it upon him. Well, we don't have to have the cat, and we don't need that because they had a little bit extra time. And just so you know, this Look. one of his daughters. <laughs> Hold on, what, how old this, is your niece? This is the best part. Oh, my niece, my niece. Yeah, she's about twelve. So she's his twelve-year-old daughter. We did this would be perfect. Oh, it yeah. uh, <laughs> comes up and says, "A spot in your movie." You say, yeah, yeah, "Hold comes on." Up and says, uh, "Hey." Uh, you said that Jeremy Bruner's been disappearing somewhere in the library to work on this. I know of a hidden basement. Uh, d- dungeon. Yes, fantasy. It's a dungeon, <laughs> dungeon under the Sage <laughs> Research Facility of Dark Elves. All right. Okay. Now, I have a couple of follow-up questions. Uh, I love the, the the family life. The dazzling, <laughs> the dazzling costumes were were choice. They had mentioned a dog dragon. Now, mm-hmm. I have a. I'm a real stickler for beagles, and I, I have a I have a beagle that I would. Uh, oh, the dragon has huge floppy ears. Yeah. Oh, like, so really actually, we didn't big. actually tell you the main important part of ours. The reason the librarian's getting so involved is the spell to bring the wife back requires a sacrifice, and Jeremy Bruner has kidnapped Danielle Steele's beagle, whose oh. name is MacGuffin. MacGuffin. <laughs> yes. Did we not mention that part? Mm, no, you didn't. And no, you in didn't. order to that stop, in order to stop that, we need that beagle rescued. <sighs> Ah, ooh, this is a tough choice. Yeah, is there Not anything else choice. that you'd like to tell us? <laughs> this is a really tough decision. You guys have it in the bag. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to draw it out for at least ten more seconds, but I think I'm going to go with uh, I think I'm going to go with Team Red here for four points. But I have to be honest with you. Let me let me let me read back. I really like the name Leroy Helms. Is there any way? Is there any way that we can work in Leroy Helms? Mm, the, the, the daughter. Da- the daughter. We've got the, Daniel. The one, of the, one of the sons. <laughs> has, and one of the sons, uh, his sons, is named Leroy. Oh, well, that's great. I yeah, think that's at he, least worth one point of credit. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> worth one point unit. And you guys, uh, I'm going to buy that name. Uh, and uh, I also love, yeah, yeah, I think that's the only thing I'm going to buy. Well, actually... I like that the cave was full of witches. Uh, so we're gonna also, we're also gonna buy that idea from them as well. So that that cave that y'all talked about, the dungeon, the dungeon. Yeah. So the, the, what about the witch we talked about? Well, there could be other witches. <laughs> Maybe for my niece. <laughs> She's got a great cackle. <laughs> anyway, moving right on because I'm a Hollywood executive. Uh, we're about an hour into the movie. Okay, and the hero and their sidekick, Daniel Leroy Jenkins Steele. We'll figure that out in between rounds. <laughs> into the villain's turf and they try and get the fix. But they're confronted with an unexpected challenge and they fail catastrophically. The hero has to pay a crushing price for this failure. We might only be halfway through the movie, but the audience has to think that it is finished. Think that it's over. We don't want to have the hero encounter the villain yet, but the questions that we're trying to answer are, what is the unexpected challenge and what is the crushing price that our hero has to pay? And brainstorm to this time. (laughs) All right, so we are now at the time where we are going to pitch, okay? So we need to, uh, we have, we have determined what the, what the sidekick was. Now we need to, wait, where are we at? We're, We're at the point where there's, they're going to have a catastrophic failure. That's right, that's right, that's right. 
That's where we're going to go. Everyone thinks the same. And since you we went first last time, pitch first last time, you will pitch first this time, and a pitch. So they get to the library, and the daughter uh, has all of these great lines. They come across a they come across an unexpectedly locked door. She shows how brilliant she is by solving the uh, puzzle mm -hmm. to get past the door. There's an evil minotaur on the other side who's getting ready to kill them, but he sees how beautiful the young girl is, and how nice she is, and how great and wonderful this girl is, Articulate. and how fabulous her costume is that she's wearing. <laughs> mm. That he just lets the entire group pass. Mm -hmm. uh, they get all the way deep into the cave where they expect to find the villain. They do find MacGuffin, but they also see two witches. And who are these witches? But John Ronald's sister-in-laws. They were. There was a. It was. They were all three witches, the sisters. And uh, what do they do? They say, "You're not a very good father." And he's like, "What? No, I agree. Our sister was better." than you yes. and our, things of that nature. Our sister had horrible taste in men. Mm. That means you. <laughs> and his self-esteem just getting lower and lower as they point out all of these different flaws. They're just like, you, you have a bit of a beer gut in your old age. You're not as <laughs> handsome as you used to be. And as we all know, when Dark Elf's self-esteem gets too low, they can die. And he it's no. collapses. And they're like, oh, did our vicious mockery cause you to suffer uh, pain and punishment? Are you about to die from our vicious mockery? <laughs> and uh, at this point, the beagle, MacGuffin, rushes out and he bites the leg of one of the witches very ah. bravely. And everyone thinks that, oh, maybe this is going to be the turning point. But the other witch is able to scoop up the beagle and they disappear. And just at that point in time, noxious gas starts to fill the room, going to kill everybody. But luckily, your niece saves the day. She I knows, like that a lot. Yes. She finds a That's secret lever that just completely removes the gas, and they're all able to escape from the library. Um, however, his self-esteem was so shot that poor John Ronald, he, can't, he, he hasn't woken up. He's, he's stuck in his own nightmares of his head. Bum, just, bum, bum. just hearing it over and over. <laughs> you, you fail. You're a failure. You, you didn't deserve your wife, even though she was a witch. You didn't even deserve a witch. <laughs> you don't deserve anything you have. And he's just trapped in his own mind. And we get to have such an amazing dream sequence with that. I mean, you, the, you thought the costumes before were fabulous. They're nothing compared to this. And all the family disrepair going through his mind. Is he a good dad? Mm. Who knows? Montage. That's, that's really good. Just that's really words. good. Montages are okay. What I'm really looking for in this scene, just to make it perfect, is some great photography of food. Oh. Do you think oh, that there's anything yeah. like that that we can yeah. throw in? You know what some of the vicious mockery is? It's about how poor of a cook he is. And we Ooh. get all of these images of the meals <laughs> he's prepared over the years and how they fail compared to the meals his witch of a wife made. Mm -hmm. you, know where they, you know where they go directly after the dungeon? A golden corral. <laughs> golden corral. <laughs> golden corral. Let me be clear. This video is in no way sponsored by or related to the Golden Corral. <laughs> well, I don't think that there's any chance that anyone who pitches after you has any chance of winning at all. Your turn. <laughs> and... Pitch. All right. Can, we, can you just do that again and turn it, turn it around? So oh. Can... Hold on, hold on. He's been doing that the whole time. Through the it's magic okay. of editing... Cut that out and pitch. <laughs> All right, picture it. They're in the library. Um, your daughter leads them to the the the, the daughter leads them. Uh, your niece leads them to the cave. The cave is filled with witches. As they come into the cave, it's it's filled with witches who are they're fighting through them with spells and magical sequences going off, and and they have to fight through the traps of the cave and get through the, the necromancer's evil lair. And his lair is is nefarious, as nefarious as you could possibly imagine. It's it's filled with dark dangers. It's filled with adventure. They spend days trying to get to the the the, the necromancers, the conjurers. Um, evil, the center of his evil lair, and um, the daughter is with them. So your niece is there the whole time mm. with the, with the like orc that. and with, the, and with the John Ronald. And when they finally get there, they think that they've made it in time, but they see standing on a dais, raised up with a glowing cauldron, the conjurer standing behind it, saying the last words of a spell. And as the spell dies off his lips, he says, Isabella, rise! <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, the beagle who's laying on the, on the altar stands up and barks. And 
the, oh, no. the conjurer himself is like, no, Isabella's body has been trapped in the, Isabella's soul has been trapped in the body of the beagle. No, oh. my spell has failed. <laughs> and we think all is lost. And then Isabella's his, his soul has been trapped in the body of a beagle. Mm. And, and, and in reality, that's where we're left. And we're left with uh, John Ronald thinking that his wife is now trapped forever in the body of a dog and that he can never get her back. Mm. That's good. That, that portrays lots of family life. Yeah. I like but all the family the, portrayal in here's that. Here's the killer. The very first thing they face whenever they come into the, 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 uh, uh, the, the dungeon is a gigantic feast. A, a huge feast. A and there's feast, an aerial you say. shot of all the food on the table, but they realize they realize uh, your niece, the daughter, realizes they can't touch the food because it's magical and mm. it will enchant them and they'll be trapped in the dungeon forever. I think we can get lots of slow lots panning of, shots lots of, of that slow beautiful panning food. Shots of all the food mm-hmm. on the yeah. table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's the very first scene. There's only one thing that this scene is missing: <laughs> golf. How can you incorporate mm. golf into this scene? That's the only thing that'll make this all tie together and make sense. Yeah. As soon as I found out that Oliver loved golf, I was like, home run, because this is a fantasy movie, and that's how much I know about golf. You know, I think audiences are just tired of all of these fantasy tropes, bows, arrows, magic. I think what people really want to know is, can Legolas chip it in from the sand? Or can, I don't know, Gandalf shoot his age? Yeah, right in front of the altar. And the audience, yeah. let's be honest. Right in front of the altar is a putting green. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, right. We are the talking fantasy. Center, <laughs> the, the, center of the altar where the beagle is. All right. And, and they have to, you know. I mean, maybe that could be like a director's cut oh, extra yeah, yeah, scene. Yeah. We have to, we have to there was a golden tee arcade machine yeah, in the one of, corral. One of the vicious mockeries <laughs> was your golf game sucks. <laughs> well, and, yeah. and, and, and we had images yeah. of him playing golf. And one of the one of the yeah. things that that uh, he, he didn't get the chance to say is, is to to make it to the altar to unlock the door. They actually have to take and make a makeshift club and knock a, a, a ball a, a round stone into the hole. And so it's fantasy ah, golf. It's a, you see, it's, it's a, a puzzle. puzzle that they have to find ah, out. It's a but it's, a, it's an actual putting green. All that right, they have to knock it into. Well, the the twist of having the the wife's body resurrected into the beagle is too good. All right, I have to go with y'all's plot line. I love I love the Minotaur. We need the Minotaur. All right, uh, and I also MacGuffin is a is a hard line. We cannot pass up on MacGuffin the Beagle. All right, so we have to keep the name MacGuffin or else everybody walks, all right? Uh, this movie doesn't get made. And if there's one saying we have at Fat Cat Movies, it's, it's we're making movies. It's a, bad, it's a bad saying, but we had to put it on the sign. All right, so y'all's storyline is picked. Two of y'all's story points are picked. And now, since we don't have any more time to dilly-dally, we have to go. Uh, where they're at their lowest point. They think that the wife is trapped in the beagle. The hero has a surprising realization at this point, however. Potentially, but not necessarily, this is a painful truth about themselves, a long-held blind spot, a lie the hero's been buying into all their life, and this realization changes everything. The new insight gives them a crazy idea for how they could get the hands, their hands on the fix after all. But don't let the, don't let the hero interact their, uh, uh, you know, enact their plan just yet. They've come up with this plan based off of this crazy realization about themselves of how they're going to go get the fix. And this plan is just daring. It's daring beyond belief. Uh, it's going to have to involve risking everything and uh, taking all the chances. All right, so the two questions that we're trying to answer are, what is this surprising realization that the hero realizes about themselves? And what is the crazy idea that it inspires? Mm. Okay. Okay. Got it. And we're breaking. Where are we? We are <laughs> in this library. We found out in that this airtight the, plot. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with this movie whatsoever. It's going to yeah, sell that's like what crazy. Is for. <laughs> if there's one thing that we've learned, it's that writers don't know how to write. Executives know how to write. Okay. <laughs> that's what makes good movies. So uh, we are we are in this cave filled with fabulous witches. Uh, a minotaur has has complimented my niece, which audiences are going to love. Uh, there's lots of food everywhere. This is all great. We've got we've got golf puzzles, and we found out we found out that uh, the the beagle, MacGuffin, is trapping the soul of John Ronald's wife, Isabella. 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 Rosalini. Yes. Rosalini. You so want to be Ronald? So the whole last Rosalini, name Rosalini didn't. Ronald, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So what happened next was. 
the hero had a surprising realization of the of, of you know for the character after this horrible failure and it caused him to have a crazy idea that's where we are you guys pitched first no second, we second last, last time, time which means you will pick first this time pitch first and <laughs> pitch <laughs> all right picture it john ronald's sitting there he's 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 Troubled, he doesn't know if he's if he's if he's sad or angry or hurt that his wife has been trapped in the body of his beloved Beagle MacGuffin. I mean, he knows that he wants MacGuffin to be okay, but he's torn on to what, as to whether or not he wants his wife to be okay. And then suddenly, his witch of a wife. His witch of a <laughs> wife. He suddenly has a flashback. He has a flashback to their wedding day, and then we get a flashback to a fantasy wedding. That's what he's picture it. Picture chiffon. it. Chiffon. 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 Costumes are so fabulous here. It's, it's just it's unbelievable. This. You can't believe how fabulous these costumes are at this wedding. But yeah. but then we get the, the, the flashback of when they exchange their vows and he realizes that he's been lied to. Yes, yes. But he, then Okay. Yeah, no, no, go, no. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you're, may I interrupt? Yeah, no, no, you I, may not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know how this is going. Yeah. yeah. So then as they exchange vows, then your, your niece hears a magic phrase, the phrase, and she likes, wait a minute, I recognize this phrase from my years of research in the library, mm. that if this phrase is uttered, then it nullifies the spell. Ooh. So she knows that the wife truly loved him and actually undid her spell at their wedding. And they were truly in love the whole time. And John Ronald realizes this and realizes that he hasn't been fooled his whole life and that his whole life has not been a lie and that he truly loved his wife the entire time and that true love nullifies the spell that traps someone's soul inside the body of an animal so her soul has not been trapped inside MacGuffin. It's impossible. It's, in, it's mm. impossible. She hasn't been raised to life, but the spell is ready to go to bring her back to life. All they have to do is defeat Jeremy Bruner. If they can defeat Jeremy Bruner, they can do the spell and bring her back to life truly and fully, and they can live happily ever after. Look, that's a wonderful pitch, but I don't have any more time. <laughs> We're busy. I don't have any follow-up questions. It's airtight. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing whatsoever. I love the costumes. And now it's y'all's turn. We, Snap. We have a name. It's Team Red. To pitch. One. <laughs> team winners. Y'all are Team Y'alls. <laughs> yeah. It's y'all's turn. And to pitch. So, uh, horrified by his loss, still being haunted by this loss. He thinks back to what went wrong, what they could do, and a constant image keeps lingering in his mind. That putting green in front of the altar. Oh. He knows he's seen Jeremy Bruner somewhere before. He knows, and he thinks back, and there used to be a large golf course. He remembers seeing Jeremy Bruner out there playing golf, he, and he realizes he loves golf, and that's when he gets his idea. They're going to build a fantasy miniature golf course. Cha All of the employees <laughs> wearing crazy fantasy costumes. All of the holes. We got a dragon breathing fire. You got to wait for the timing. We got a unicorn running across. Chivago. 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 We've got everything on this fantasy golf oh, yeah. course. And uh, what do they do? They're, they're spying. They're spying on Jeremy Bruner, seeing how he plays. And what has he done? He's trained Isabella MacGuffin to mm. chase the ball as he hits it and get it out of the hole. But the other thing is, Jeremy Bruner's amazing at golf and at, at miniature golf. There's no way he's going to lose. So what is their, their plan? Your daughter comes up with the idea. She enchants a golf ball that they're going to give to him. That when it's hit into a hole, a hole in one, it will release the soul of the nearest creature, which will be MacGuffin, and it will be Isabella's soul, and purify MacGuffin, restoring MacGuffin back to his beagly goodness, and he can res <laughs> restore, return to Danielle. Uh, during all of this planning, Danielle's realized she not only loves your niece, she loves John Ronald, and perhaps she could be the mother they've always needed. Yeah. That is good. I, I like the, the social inclusion of orcs and elves. You know, I don't think that you should rely on two dark elves getting together in today's society. Look, I only care about eight things, and that is not one of them. All right. Uh, don't, don't say that in public. <laughs> the card tells me what I care about. It's not that. Uh, it says golf. All right. All uh, right. <laughs> oh, and did we mention that every golfer is given a golfer's feast? There's a big banquet to kick Ooh, off the tournament. Ooh, <laughs> golfer's feast. All wearing 
and everyone's and, and everyone extravagant outfits at all the tables are divided up by family to celebrate family life. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's a tough choice. Not really, but it's a tough choice. And I'm saying that to create tension. <laughs> I think I like I think I like storyline one a little bit better. I like the idea I like the idea of 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 those those vows, the secret phrase nullifying this this realization that the, the the main character John Ronald has this realization that he truly he truly did have love all along, and this sets up a, a truly great fix. It answers the question, what what is this what is this uh, the fix that they have to go and 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 solve this issue that they have? So I like I like y'all's storyline, but I I really love the the them finding a mother that needs to happen in this storyline, and I also love I also love all of the sweeping shots of food. So I'm going to buy those two things, and y'all have to incorporate that, or else you're fired. <laughs> but I'm keeping y'all's storyline. Got it. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right. Yeah. And now we have our shocking finale. We're in the last ten minutes of the movie. Acting on their crazy idea, the terrified hero soon comes face to face with a vastly superior villain. What ensues is a life-or-death showdown. It quickly becomes clear just how foolish the hero was to think that they stood any chance at all. But wait, just as the hero is about to get crushed, they pull a brilliant winning move that annihilates the villain. Nobody saw this coming, least of all the hero themselves. It's heroic, uplifting, and true evidence of their growth. The hero takes possession of the fix and uses it to repair the catastrophic damage. Good triumphs over evil. We fade to black. Cellos play us to the parking lot. So... What does the life or death showdown look like? And what does the hero's what is the hero's brilliant winning move? Dun, dun. All right, we have to have our shocking finale. We're answering the question, what uh, does this life or death showdown look like and what is the hero's brilliant winning move? Okay? So, uh, team red, you will be pitching first and team green that means you'll be pitching after first. <laughs> and pitch! Danielle has to rescue MacGuffin. Uh, John Ronald has to rescue his wife's soul. Mm. And, wait, what was your niece's name? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good, it's Karen. Karen that's the name of the oldest daughter! Oh, oh my ah. gosh. And Karen, and Karen is going with him as she knows the spell to free the wife. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> and to the dungeon. <laughs> they head to the dungeon on their enchanted bikes. And uh, when they get there, they come across the other witches. This time, John Ronald's prepared. He tells them all about how great of a father he is, how they missed out on not being with this guy, and the great meals he prepared, the great outfits oh. him and his wife have wear, the golf they played, the families that they, the family that they developed. The, the just photo <laughs> albums that the sister-in-laws were not invited to. That's right. In and including in those photo albums, pictures of every anniversary feast they ever had. Nice lingering close-ups with amazing music. Oh, yeah. And, Plenty of food shots. And, and but as the sisters fall, we look over, we see Jeremy Bruner has uh, young Karen held captive. And uh, there's no way John Ronald can get there in time. So uh, John Ronald, if we cut back to a memory of him researching, there's two ways to end the spell. One will destroy all life on the planet, but it will mean him and his family get to live in peace and harmony forever in heaven. And Jeremy Bruner will go straight to hell where he deserves. And so he says the line, everybody, all of a sudden, people, blue lights on all of our heroes, red flames surround all of our villains. And just as uh, they're getting ready to go, MacGuffin has no light. And John says, MacGuffin, what's, what's going on? And MacGuffin woofs once. And several other beagles come out also with no lights. And he says, why John, why John Ronald, these are my motorcycling family. We are the Meeks. And as is foretold, the Meeks shall inherit the earth. Thank you, John Ronald. Thank you and your family. Danielle, I will always love you and I will find you in the future. <laughs> Setting up a great sequel. Mm -hmm. Yes, with the Backstreet Boys playing in the background. Yeah, I'm thinking we might need a trilogy out of this, yeah. and there's definitely material. All right. Uh, yep, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like, I like uh, the family involvement. I like all the food. Uh, I'm assuming there were dazzling costumes oh, in yeah. here. Oh, that, that goes without saying. Every single costume. Yeah, we didn't have to well, say it, it went without saying. Let me, that's let me tell you, you know, those beagles at the end, have you ever seen beagles in cute costumes? Have you ever seen beagles in cute costumes? Because the internet has, and they love them. <laughs> mm. I'm hoping the internet makes its way into this fantasy movie as well. We'll see. All right. Well, it's time for 
Green Pitch 2. Oh, that's, that's not a bad idea for a movie involving golf. All right. <laughs> and, in case we tie. And, <laughs> all right. So picture it. John Ronald's at his lowest. He's there. His, his wife, he, he believes that his wife's soul has been, has been encapsulated into the body of a dog, and, and he believes he's been defeated. And suddenly he realizes he has to defeat Jeremy Bruner. And Jeremy Bruner suddenly explodes into a, a massive, just magical fury. And he becomes, he has sound effects, and his costume becomes, starts glowing. It's just fabulous. Fabric. And, oh, and fabric flowing everywhere as he floats, floats into the yeah. air. <laughs> and, and, he's, and, his, and his cloak is billowing out behind him, and he forms this huge fireball and is about to destroy John Ronald. And John Ronald suddenly, from the darkness in the corner of the cave, Here's his daughter, your niece, Karen, by the way. Yell out to him. Great fantasy name. Exactly. <laughs> and he turns to her, and she tosses him the golf club that he used in the golf uh. challenge earlier to solve the putting green challenge. And he sees the, the golf ball-shaped rock in front of him, and he realizes he has one shot. You can do it, Daddy. Yeah, and, and she <laughs> believes in him. And because she believes in him, he hauls off and he takes one massive shot. And just like David and Goliath, the rock flies and strikes true right to Jeremy Brunner's forehead, who falls down dead. And he defeats him. And he realizes that, he, that the, the spell has been primed, and he can bring back his wife. And because of the true love, it actually doesn't just bring her back to life, but it purifies her soul from all of her witchy evilness. And all of the witches become purified and become one big family. And they end with a huge family feast on a golf course. Ooh, a huge away. fairway feast. <laughs> a feast so big you need golf carts to get from one end to the other. Yes, exactly. Fantasy golf That's carts. where all the motors came in. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering about <laughs> and, and we get a big shot of the feast of all the food at the feast and everyone living as a huge happy family at the end. Mm. This is a tough call. And I'm thinking about this. And I think I have to go with Team Red. All right? I love the idea of the meek inheriting the earth. I'm sorry, Team Green. But that plot just made too much sense. I have to go with y'all's plot that sets up sequels with lovable beagles, because if there's one thing that audiences want, it's fantasy-based pet films. <laughs> and, in fact, I hated this so much that I'm not going to buy anything. I'm awarding no points, which means that we're tied. And the tiebreaker in this game is you both have to come up with a uh, name for the movie and a tagline that is going to put butts in seats. That's what we need. You know, right off my head, I think Lord of the Links, <laughs> Love Finds a Way. Ooh, that's a good title. No, that's a good title. No, no, no. I, like, I, like, I like Green Pitch 2 because Green Pitch 1 wasn't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> it incorporates golf. It brings, <laughs> it brings in the fantasy the theme. <laughs> and now y'all's theme. MacGuffin. The loving you need. <laughs> the loving you need. Well... It's a tough call, and it's not predetermined, but I'm definitely pick. Actually, it is different, but I still think I love Lord of the Links enough, the green pitch, too. That makes total sense. It ties everything together. And because of that, you have narrowly won in a tiebreaker victory. Mm. Congratulations. That was fair That's and honest technical. and mm. only recorded once. <laughs> So we'll probably cut this, but every time we said John Ronald's wife is a witch, Paul said, oh, I know what that's like. It will be cut! <laughs> <laughs> because I want my wife to stay my wife. <laughs>